Okay guys, I'll give you a little walk around on what this thing looks like on the inside. A little tutorial on maybe even how to build one. It's a 20, I believe this is a 24 or 28 quart Coleman. This is the GQF Sportsman backup thermostat. That's what they used to use as the primary thermostat, but now they got these big uh, electronic thermostats that handle everything, but they still have these and all the Sportsman as a backup thermostat. Okay, you got your little, uh, well, it's a little made in China computer fan, just like it's going to be in just about all of your uh, fans. I think that one's an 80 millimeter. This is a pretty small box. It's a 34 watt light bulb, 40 watt will work just fine. And as you can see right here on the bottom, you see a little quarter inch holes. I got two on each corner all the way around. That's where the fresh air comes in. Fresh air comes in, comes in and it flows out these holes on the top. Okay. See a little bit better, three eighths holes on the top for the air to circulate out. And come on around and take a look at the electronics. On the back, it's a regular old standard light socket. You get it Lowe's. I took the sleeve off of it and just mounted it in here like this. So here's your adjustment for your thermostat. Okay, regular old heavy duty extension cord. Got it at Goodwill. You can see right here for a dollar. Got it at Goodwill. Here's your 12 volt inverter. Most important thing whenever you're looking at your inverters is to make sure that they're 12 volt DC. Input 120 volt AC, output 12 volt DC in the 10 to 13 volt range all works fine. Okay. Whenever you split, I just cut this uh, extension cord right at the top, right here. Split it one side, it doesn't matter which side, one side runs in to the one side of the thermostat, okay? The other side runs into the thermostat, the other wire is going to come back out and come in to your wiring right here, okay? The other one for your light bulb. Okay, here's a shot of the electronics on the back. Wiring up the thermostat seems to be what bites everybody the, the most. The extension cord, regular old extension cord comes in right here. What you're doing, the principle of the thermostat, the principle of the thermostat, what you're doing is you're breaking one side of the bulb, doesn't matter which side. One side goes directly in in this case, the black side right here goes directly to one side of your power source. Does and it doesn't matter which side, as long as you stick with it once you start. Okay, it's wired in to this side of the power source. The thermostat breaks the other side. Okay, the white wire runs out. I connected it right here. It runs in. to one side of the thermostat, okay? Doesn't matter which side, doesn't matter which side. No need to overcomplicate it. Then you hook the other side to complete the circuit. The other wire comes out and goes to the other side of the power source. All the thermostat is doing in actuality is interrupting the complete circuit. You've got one side of your bulb, one side goes directly to the plug, the other side routes out from the fan, from the fan, from the bulb socket, sorry, routes in to the thermostat, or the wire back out to complete the circuit. That's about as simple as I can uh, try to explain it because it's not really complicated, but it really seems to bite a lot of folks whenever they try to wire up this bulb and wire up the thermostat. I hope that helps, guys. Talk to you soon. Okay, here's the 28 quart cooler baiter that I'm building right now. Just finished. I think you can see on the bottom. I may not have been able to, but it's uh, it's 
should be holding at 100 degrees. No variance. It's holding. I got a uh, GQF Sportsman. It's actually the old backup Sportsman wafer thermostat. 138 to 40 watt light bulb. Pretty small cooler. So it gets the job done. It should cycle back on here in just a minute. Like I said, see it's holding at 100. I don't have any humidity in there right now. Uh, but for testing purposes, it's not necessary right now. No eggs. Okay. Just cycle back on, and it won't stay on long. Computer fan running right there side to keep the air circulating. And she's back off. And it is holding at 100. It is not varying one bit. That's where she's locked in at. All running. And that's it. 28 quart cold milk. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about the humidity. Because I know that's going to come up. This isn't the one I was just talking about. This is a this is a brand new 58 quart Coleman. All right, it just cycled on so we could see it. Hopefully, okay. See, that's a cereal bowl that I have in there, regular old cereal bowl with cotton T-shirt, an old cotton T-shirt, shredded up and put in there, act like a wick. See, it's holding at 73% in there. Now I've got eggs, Polish eggs, and they're ready to hatch. You want to hold around 70% humidity whenever they're ready to hatch. But this one, it's bigger. I have two bulbs. It's kind of tough to see. You may not be able to see because it's fogged up with all this humidity there. You can see the other bulb right there. Two 40 watt bulbs in this one. This is a big incubator. And I had more eggs in there. You can see they've hatched. These others were a day or so behind. But you see what we got here? She is holding at 99.1, 74% humidity. This size bowl, you probably wouldn't need one that big with that little, uh, with the 28 quart that we were just talking about. But you can play around with it. And uh, you make it use a little one, one and a half pint Tupperware bowl or something like that with some shredded cotton t shirt. All works good, works like a wick. and you can get your humidity perfect by just playing around with how the, the surface area of the water and uh, the amount of wick that you have in your uh, in your bowl. But it's trial and error, but it's not that difficult to get it right.